let us continue with the structure of I. Most of the things we have discussed in the previous part. Now there are a few more things, a few more labels which we have to add. We have drawn this blind spot here. I'm going to shift this label here. So this is the blind spot. And blind spot is the region where there are no rod cells or cone cells. So there is no visual part here. Now in this part of retina, we have shown a depression. This central part is right in front of the lens. This region, the central region is known as area centralis or there is one more term given to this and that is macula lutea. Macula lutea. This is the portion where there are only cone cells. There are only cone cells. And the depressed area, this depression which we are seeing here is known as fovea. So the area is known as macula lutea or area centralis which has only cones. And this sort of acts as a guide and there is a depression which is called fovea. This is the point where sharpest image is formed. So this is specifically for sharp daytime image. So the image formation is sharpest in this area. Now we have already labeled two liquids which are there in the anterior and the posterior compartments. The first liquid which we wrote was aqueous humor. This aqueous humor performs certain functions. For example, it is going to provide nourishment to two layers. It is going to provide nourishment to cornea. Nourishment to cornea is provided by two liquids. One is aqueous humor and the other is the lacrimal secretion or tears. So here aqueous humor provides nutrition to cornea and to the lens also and to the lens. So the liquid which is present here is going to provide nourishment to the cornea as well as the lens. Now this liquid is continuously produced. So it has to be drained. Because if it is not drained, it is going to press on this part that is lens and ultimately the pressure is going to exert, get exerted on the retina. And this results into a serious kind of problem called glaucoma. So to drain it, to drain this aqueous humor at the junction of cornea and sclerotic here, at this junction, there is a canal present. And this opening of the canal or the canal is known as canal of Schlem. It is called canal of Schlem. This drains. So here we will write that aqueous humor gets drained by canal of Schlem. And the location where this canal is present is at corneosclerotic junction. At this point this canal is present and if this canal is blocked, if blocked, then the disease or the condition which is caused or caused is known as glaucoma and that can result into blindness. So it provides nourishment, it maintains pressure also and it has to be drained also. The second liquid is vitreous humor which is also known as Wharton's jelly. It also performs certain important functions. The first important function, it again provides nourishment to 
the retina because it is here so it is going to provide nourishment to the retina it is also responsible for maintaining the shape so shape of the eyeball is maintained by two main structures the outermost fibrous layer that is the sclerotic part and the liquid which is filled inside in the bigger compartment that is vitreous humor or Wharton's jelly so it maintains shape of eyeball so these are functions now one more thing which is uh, important about aqueous and vitreous humor aqueous and vitreous humor are rich in vitamin C both of them they have high vitamin E oh sorry vitamin C content we will add one more structure here. There is a transparent canal which runs from this vitreous humor. It starts from the optic nerve, from where the optic nerve emerges and it goes up to the lens. So from here there is a transparent canal which is going like this. Narrow canal. This is known as hyaloid canal. This is called hyaloid canal and it is a, a, a transparent extension in the vitreous body or in the vitreous humor. Vitreous humor has three names, vitreous humor, Wharton's jelly, it is also known as vitreous body. So in this jelly part, there is a transparent canal which runs from the optic membrane or sorry, from the region where the optic nerve emerges or blind spot to the base of the lens. So we have seen all the structures. Now let us talk about one last part that is the lens. The lens is made up of crystalline transparent proteins. Crystalline transparent proteins. And it is surrounded by a membrane which is known as lens capsule. Surrounded by a membrane which is known as capsule. This lens is biconvex on bulging on both the sides. But if we very carefully observe the shape, it is convex from the front and it is more convex from the back side, though it is biconvex. But that curvature on the anterior or front side is less as compared to the posterior side. And it is proteinaceous. The proteins are crystalline and transparent. And this protein is surrounded again by a transparent membrane, which is known as the lens capsule. So this is the structure of the human eye. We have seen all layers, that is the outermost sclerotic. We have seen the middle layer, which is choroid, ciliary part and iridal and retina. The detailed structure of retina we will take up in the next part because there are many things which we have to discuss in that. And there is an area from where the nerve leaves the eye. The nerve is optic nerve, which is a sensory nerve. And because this is the sense organ, then the sensory nerve is per, uh, perceiving that uh, photo or reception and taking it to the optic lobes. The innermost retina, which has rod cells, cone cells, ciliary part and iridal part. Ciliary part of both the layers combine to form ciliary body. Iridal parts of both combine to form the iris. Iris also has two types of muscles. Ciliary bodies also have two types of muscles. From the ciliary body, the lens is suspended with the help of suspensory ligaments. The lens is biconvex and we have seen the shape. It is more convex on its posterior side. There are two compartments formed because of this lens hanging in between. In front of it, it is aqueous a compartment or chamber filled with aqueous humor. Posterior is known as vitreous chamber or filled with vitreous humor. Now this is the structure. The important things or terms which we have to remember is the central part. 
which is known as area centralis or macula lutea and this depression which is the fovea. As we have seen that this is the region where there are only cones. As we move from this side towards the front, the number of rod and cone cells would be equal. But as we come closer to the lens, the number of rod cells increases. So distribution is in this region only cone cells. As we move either ways, that is coming towards the anterior side, number of rod cells, cone cells pretty much equal, here also equal. As we come closer to the lens, there are more rod cells and less cone cells. So all these terms, aura serrata, important again, it is a fibrous uh, finger-like structure at the junction of the retina that is optical part and its ciliary part and canal of Schlem which is present at the junction of cornea and sclerotic and this canal drains all extra aqueous humor. If this doesn't get drained or the canal gets blocked, the aqueous humor accumulates, it exerts pressure on the lens and ultimately the pressure is exerted on the retina and this results into blindness and that condition is known as glaucoma. So this is the structure of the human eye. In the next part, we will take up the structure of retina only and then we will see the mechanism of working.